Hello everyone, hi and welcome to the channel Wall Street Mojo. To know more about this video, Excel modeling, that is basically this is completely financial functions in Excel, uh, part of the financial modeling. Watch the video till the end. And also if you're new to this channel, then you can subscribe us by clicking the, clicking the bell icon that's given below. Welcome everyone. In today's session, we are going to learn some of the important functions which are used in financial modeling and uh, it will play a very key role uh, in understanding uh, uh, any models that you make. Well, uh, this is just a screenshot of you know how things will go about. Uh, see, let me run you through. Let me run you through. See the top 15 uh, functions in Excel. See, Microsoft Excel is the most important tool of investment bankers and financial analysts. They spend 70% of their time on preparing Excel models, formulating assumptions, valuations, and calculations like graphs and so on and so forth. So it is safe to assume that the investment bankers are masters in Excel shortcuts and formulas. Though there are more uh, than 50 plus financial functions in Excel and the list of the top 15, and they're the most important one. Without much uh, ado, let's have a look at the financial functions one by one. We'll start with the first one is the future value in for financial function in excel how does the future value work well if you want to find out the future value of the particular investment which has constant interest rates and periodic payment used we, we need to use the future value formula so if you just write fv here or just write is equal to fv just open the bracket you will see rate npr pmt and type rate basically it is the interest rate or the period NPER is the number of the periods. PMT is the payment period. Okay. PV, as you can see, just beside that is the present value. And the last one is the type. Okay. And the type is basically when the payment is made. And if nothing is mentioned, it is assumed that the payment has been made at the end of the period. Okay. Let me give you a short example so that you can have a, a greater idea on this particular regards. Let's say the rate of interest let's say the rate of interest that we are talking about here is 10 percent okay uh, the npr is let's say around three pmt that is particularly is let's say one pv is let's say minus 100 and uh, the type is let's say zero so how the future will be calculated is equal to future value the rate, the NPER, PMT, uh, PV, that's minus 100, and finally the type that is zero. So it will give us an answer of US dollar 129.79. Well, this was it. Let us get to the second one, that is the FV schedule. Second formula, FV schedule, financial function, this is in Excel, the financial function, this is very important when you need to calculate the future value with the variable interest rates. Uh, how does this work? Well, you say FV schedule, so it will say principal and the schedule. So your principal over here, the first one, is the present value of the particular investment. The schedule over here is the series of the interest rate put together in case of excel we will use different boxes and we'll try and select the range see you have let's say i'll, I'll take an example uh, let's say mr m has invested uh, closely around hundred dollars let's say he has invested hundred dollars at the end of 2016 and it is expected that the interest rate will change every year so in 2017 2018 2019 the interest rate would be like around four uh, six and five respectively okay so what would be the fe in 2019 so how does the whole uh, thing gets divided so the principal okay that is 100 2017 2018 and 2019 this is 4% then 6 percent and then there is 5% Okay, so how does the FV schedule be made? So FV schedule is equal to the principal value that is 100, comma, the schedule will be this whole thing. So it will show us $115.752. So future value with variable interest rates. 
let's understand the next one that is the present value financial function in Excel. If you know how to calculate the F, it is easier for you to find out the PV. How does it work? Well, we will start with is equal to PV. Okay, uh, PV present value is what if you see there is a rate NPER, PMT, FV and time. So rate it is basically the uh, interest rate per period. NPER is the number of periods. PMT is the payment period. FV is uh, the future value and type is when the payment is made and if nothing is mentioned it is assumed that the payment has been made in the end of the period okay let me start with the pv function here let's say the future value of the investment that you are going to make is let's say hundred dollar in 2019 the payment has been made yearly and the let's say the interest rate that you are looking forward to is let's say 10 percent per annum so what would be the pv as of now that's what that's what you have to calculate so in this particular regard let's say the pv is going to be let's take this number only rate okay then NPER take exactly the same thing if you want three then then one okay comma then you will have a dash or you can say minus hundred or probably you don't even need to take that close the bracket and then you will get 72.64 as the answer it's just the present value the next is the net present value NPV. The net present value is basically the sum total of the positive and the negative cash flows over the years. And uh, let's let me give you an idea how it is represented. So once you write NPV, it will say rate value one and value two. So rate is basically the rate of discount uh, rate for a period. That's value and then there's value one and value two three. So those are the positive and negative cash flow. So your negative values would be considered as the payments and the positive ones would be treated as the inflows. So let me give you an example to make you understand this. Let's say the interest is interest rate is 5%. Initial investment is standing at 1000 uh, return. From this is 300, 400, 400, and 400. Let's say these are different cash flows. Now, so find out the NPV based on this. NPV is equal to the rate, comma, all the cash flows. So it will show you 303.75. Let me change this to 300, so that will give me 229. Okay, so just changed one number. So uh, this is basically NPV. The next one that we are going to understand is XNPV. That is the fifth one, XNPV formula. Now this financial function is similar to the NPV, but with a small twist. Okay, here yeah, the payment and the income are not not periodic in uh, nature. You need to very well note this. Rather, specific dates are mentioned for each payment and income. Uh, let's see how it, it's it's done. Is equal to X N P V. Once you write that, you will get rate, values, and dates. Rate is discount rate for a period. Values is positive or negative cash flow. That is an array of values, and dates is basically the specific date of an array or a value. We'll take the same example X N P V. The rate here five percent. And then the values, okay. Uh, here dates will also be taken into consideration. So let me put down some dates here so that uh, just write some random dates 1, 12, 20, 12. I'll add uh, uh, one month to this, okay. Uh, not like that. Let's see if I can change a few things. I'll try and change this as 13, this as 14 this as 15 this as 16 okay so now let's me do x n p v uh the rate here is this then the values will be taken as given below and the dates here are as follow so well our answer is 240 dollars right the next function that we are going to learn is the pmt function now 
uh, when we talk about the PMT function in Excel, PMT denotes the periodic payments that is required to pay off for a particular period of a time with a constant interest rate. Let's have a look at it. How exactly PMT function is done? So is equal to PMT. When you open the bracket, it says rate and PR, all the same things that we have learned in past. Now. Here the rate is the rate of interest rate or period. NPER is the number of period. PV is the present value. FE is an optional argument which is about the future value of a loan. If nothing is mentioned, FE is considered as zero. In the type when the payment is made, if nothing is mentioned, it is assumed that the payment has been made at the end of the period. So how this will get accounted, you will say is equal to PMT. Since it's US dollar, 1000 needs to be paid in full for three years. So interest rate is 10% per annum. Payment needs to be done yearly. So how does the PMT will work? So I'll say PMT, I'll take the rate over here. The rate is 10% uh, uh, NPER, let's say three. And uh, apart from that, let's say this is my PV, not minus 100, I'll try and change it. And uh, was that this one field something is missing it's a field error let me change this to 1000 so still that is showing me a field error let me write down a couple of things here right now rate NPER PV uh, FV and then there is type so let me write here 10 percent NPER is 3 this is 1000 and let's not write anything here so I'll say PMT okay the rate is uh, PV is uh, NPER 3 PV as 1000 FE as nothing and type as 0 close the bracket it will show us minus 402.11 well let's take a next example example number seven that is sorry uh, this is the next formula ppmt now this is another version of pmt this only differentiate is that the, this is ppmt calculates the payment on the principal with a constant interest rate and constant periodic payment so this is how it's going to be calculated when you see the PPMT, the rate is it rate it is the interest rate that is uh, per period period for which the principal is to be calculated. PER when you just write PPMT, okay. The, then there is a rate. Then there is PER, the period for which the principal is to be calculated. Then there is NPER, uh, that is number of periods. And then there is PV, that is present value. FV is an optional argument which is uh, about the future value of a loan if nothing is mentioned and FV is considered as zero. The type when the payment is made, if nothing is mentioned, it is assumed that the payment will be made at the end of the period. So how we are going to calculate this? Let's look at the example. Let's say US $1,000 are to be paid full in three years and interest rate is 10% per annum and the payment needs to be done yearly. We need to find out the PPNT in the first year and the second year. The solution will be something like this. Let's say there is a details of rate that is given. And then NPER, uh, PV, FV, and uh, type 10%, 3, 1000. So is equal to PPMT. This is going to be the rate NPER as 3 and PV as 1000 okay let's just end it up here you entered a few arguments for this for performance FV as let's say nothing type as uh, oh okay type as let's say zero so it is showing us a zero answer here in in specific so 10 percent one three uh, for this one should be one and still it is showing us zero so it has to be zero then well uh, the next one that we are going to consider is the IRR formula uh, now to understand where any new project or investment is profitable or not 
the form uses an IRR and if an IRR is more than the hurdle rate it is acceptable rate okay, acceptable rate that is divided by the average cost of capital then it's profitable for the firm and vice versa let's have a look and you know find out how IRR exactly works so when you write IRR uh, you get uh, the values of positive or negative cash flows the values can be any any sort of cash flows and the guess is basically an assumption that what you think about the IRR that should be so there are some series of the investment uh, uh, that you should take into account uh, uh, 1000 then return from the first as 300 400 400 400 and then 300 so you need to find out the IRR over here so you'll say is equal to IRR and in the IRR you will specify the values as these ones okay comma uh, you'll say 0 0.1 as a guess just putting down your guess so well uh, that comes down to let me just reduce down one so it will come down to closely around 15 percent yes well uh, this will be uh, part one of the of the advanced function of excel in financial modeling so well uh, this since this is the continuation we will say mir which is the next formula that we are going to study is the modified internal rate of return now the modified internal rate of return is the one step ahead of the internal rate of return MIR, MIRR it signifies that the investment is profitable and uh, is used in business so MIRR is calculated by uh, assuming that NPV is as zero so let's see how it is calculated now this MIRR is calculated as I told you assuming that NPV is zero let's see how it is calculated when you start writing with is equal to MRR okay is equal to MIR. It shows us values. So values is positive or negative cash flows, which is an array of values. Then there is financial rate, which is interest rate paid for the money used in cash flows. Uh, then it's reinvestment rate, that is the interest rate paid for the reinvestment of the cash flow. So let let me enter into the example first. Well, uh, let's say the if the initial investment. is standing at minus 1000 then there are returns that are coming in first year in second in third and so on and so forth 300 400 400 and 300 so the finance rate is let's say 12 percent let's say 12 percent and reinvestment rate is uh, 10 percent so what we need to do is we need to find out the IRR of the company now the IRR will be will be writing is equal to MIRR the entire B the all, all the values the interest the finance rate will be 12 percent and the reinvestment rate is going to be 10 percent that gives us 13 percent as the answer okay tenth formula that is x irr now here we need to find out the irr which has a specific date of cash flow that's the only difference between irr and x irr now let's have a look at how to calculate the x irr in the excel formula in this we have values dates uh, in terms of values uh, we have uh, let me just write the formula so you have an idea values we have positive or negative cash flows dates we have specific dates which is an array of dates and guess is an assumption for what you think IRR should be so let's take an example again the same one just that over here we'll put down some dates just like we did for previous ones I'll just uh, pick up the dates here from here and we'll put it down here so is equal to let's uh, begin with the formula we'll sing x irr the values will be all these ones dates will be the above so well it gives us 14 percent in this particular regards let's understand the next one that is n p e r 
Well, it is simply the number of the periods one requires to pay off the loan. So let's see how we can calculate the NPER. Here, the rate, it is the interest rate per bond or a period. So if I write NPER, rate is the interest rate per period. PMT is the amount that is paid per period. PV is the present value. FV is basically an optional argument which is about the future value of a loan. If nothing is mentioned, FV is considered as zero. And type, when the payment is made, if nothing is mentioned, it is assumed that the payment has been made at the end of the period. So the NPER example will be something like this. Let's say $200 is paid for a loan of $1,000 and interest rate is 10% and the payment needs to be done yearly. So we need to find NPER. So is equal to NPE, NPER. We will say the rate as 10%. PMT will be minus 200 and uh, the present value as 1000. So it will show us 7.27 years closely around that. So that is NPER. These are just the balancing figures you are trying to figure out. Let's figure out the rate. Now, through the rate function, we can calculate the interest rate that needs to be paid or pay to pay off a loan in a full or for a given period of time. And let's have a look at how to calculate the rate of the financial function in Excel. Now, when you start with is equal to rate, you will say NPER, PMT, PV, and again the same thing. There's no change, you know it now very well. So in the similar fashion, I'll take the example here. Let's say uh, in case of rate, the number, everything will remain the same. Let's say US 200 is paid per year and is paid for a loan of 1,006, loan of 1,000 for six years and the payment needs to be done yearly. So what we need to do is we need to find out the rate here. So here the number of years is six, PMT is minus 200 and loan is 1,000. So we will start with uh, uh, NPV, PER as 6%, uh, then PMT as minus 200. Post that, uh, uh, the loan amount will be uh, 1000 and uh, the rest will be let's keep it as uh, 0 0 and the yes will be 1 so it will give us closely around 5% that's the how, that's how you find the rate then there is a the next function called effect function now through the effect function we can understand the effective annual interest rate when we have the normal interest rate and the number of compounding per year it becomes easy to find out the effective interest rate. So let's have a look at how to calculate the effect financial function in Excel. There's one thing called nominal rate and another is called NPERY. So nominal rate is a nominal interest rate and NPERY is the number of the compounding per year. So let's start with the example. Let's say a payment needs to be paid with a nominal interest rate. Okay, that is at uh, 12 percent and when the number of the compounding period is let's say 12 so you'll say is equal to effect in the effect formula 12 percent is the rate and NPER is 12 close the bracket that will give us 12.68 percent let's understand the next one the nominal formula so when we have an effective annual interest rate and the number of the compounding period per year, we can calculate the nominal rate for the year. And let's have a look at how to do it in Excel specifically. When we begin, you'll say is equal to nominal. Uh, the effect rate and uh, let me make you understand. The effect rate is basically the effective annual interest rate and NPERY is basically the number of the compounding per year. So in this example, a payment needs to be paid for the effective interest rate or the rate of annual equivalent rate of 12% when the number of the compounding per year is 12. The effective interest rate will be 12% and NPERY is 12. That will give us around 11.39%. So this is the formula for nominal. The next 15th is called SLN formula financial function Excel. So through the SLN function, we can calculate depreciation via straight line method in Excel and we will look at SLN financial function. Something like this is equal to SLN and they have cost, salvage and life. 
the cost is the cost of the asset when they bought at the initial amount salvage is the amount of the value of the asset after depreciation and the life is the number of period over which the asset is being depreciated so the initial cost of the machinery will put down as 5000 here the salvage value uh, let's say 300 and the life of the asset will be 10 so it will give us 470 baht dollar well, uh, I hope uh, you have got a very fantastic idea regarding all these 15 formulas. If you have learned and enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe us by clicking the bell icon that's given below for all the latest updates. Thank you once again everyone for joining the session.